what good you have in your life what you've clearly you've done plenty of good to have what you have in your life and don't forget that and and lean on that as as um as a as a rock so to speak to get through these hard times and to remind yourself that you're a lot stronger than you realize that you can do this if you're experiencing any stress or overwhelm in your life if you've been an athlete and you've been injured or you know someone who has tra traumatic brain injury you will definitely find enormous value in today's episode. We are speaking with Vince Reginella. He is a licensed professional counselor specializing in stress management. And he works specifically with athletes and with people who have suffered brain injury, specifically from concussions. But some of the insights that he has really can apply themselves to anybody, even if you haven't ever played sports a day in your life. The key is how to address stress and overwhelm. He gives us some great tips and insight in this episode. He also talks about his own experience with having injured himself and having to redefine himself as an athlete and understand what that meant in terms of his own self-confidence and accepting of the situation for what it was. So I think you're going to love this episode. I know you're going to love Vince. He's such a very intelligent and introspective young man. He also tells us a little bit about the stresses and overwhelm in graduate school where he's currently studying to receive his PhD. Join me in welcoming Vince Reginella. Hello and welcome to the Business of Happiness podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Taryn McCarthy, and today is going to be a great day because we are speaking with Vince Reginella, the one and only <laughs> he is gracing our podcast stage today. He is a licensed professional counselor. And here is what I'm so excited for him to share with us today. He specializes in stress management counseling, and he works specifically with athletes and also with people who've had brain trauma and younger people and people of all ages. Am I right, Vince? You are. You are right. Absolutely. Well, welcome to the Business of Happiness. I, thank you for having me. I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm so excited to have you because we really are interested in hearing your perspective as a young professional and in terms of your attitude. And I know that what you focus a lot on is positive psychology mm -hmm. and how to integrate those practices in helping people decrease their stress level. Tell us a little bit about your perspective and how you approach clients when it comes to stress. Sure. So, so uh, I have a background in athletics. I, I've played soccer my whole life, all through high school and college, uh, and through sports, um, through setbacks and, and lessons. I, I've learned the value of positive psychology, not just as it applies to sport, but just in life itself. And so, um, I've kind of taken um, the lens of sports as a game uh, and, and kind of applied that to how I work with people and looking at life itself as a game. And so I think I, I tend to focus my clinical uh, approach around the idea of improving your performance in life. So we kind of take that sports analogy and extrapolate it to, you know, a much bigger concept, life itself. Um, and so positive psychology has been my go-to um, theory or, or uh, orientation as a, as a counselor. I feel like it offers um, a lot of uh, potential for a wide range of people. Um, I think it highlights the uh, inherent strengths and uh, abilities that we all have that sometimes uh, life because of stress and circumstances can uh, obstruct our vision or uh, it can get in the way of us being reminded of that. And I think um, through using positive psychology, it can just kind of help strengthen ourselves and use the tools that we have within us already. It's just about, it's a matter of just bringing that stuff out. Fabulous. So Take a step back and tell us a little bit about your journey in terms of soccer and sports and how this brought you to this understanding in psychology. So what was your experience and what were some of the psychological tools that you used in soccer? Sure. So I, I started playing soccer when I, was a, when I was a kid around middle school age, and I started to take it seriously through high school. And, um, you know, I, I think in high school, you know, growing as a player and as an adult, you... Um, it, it's kind of, uh, it was kind of my first um, exposure to how to handle setbacks or failures or defeats. Um, and, you know, of course, as a young person, like many people, I, I'm sure at first I didn't handle it well. Uh, I, I learned kind of what not to do when it comes to uh, stress or expectations or um, any kind of, um, you know, any kind of uh, 
defeats that you know uh, that aren't the result you wanted as a, as a player or as a person. Uh, and once I got recruited to play in college, uh, the the competition, um, you know, it, it was it was a lot tougher. Um, better players, more expectations. Um, playing in the NCAA, there's there's also just um, you know kind of the expectation that this is a bigger stage and you have to show up. And so I think as a as a younger player, um, it, it was definitely a learning curve trying to acclimate yourself, um, trying to develop the confidence in yourself to to continue playing at the next level, even if at times. I didn't necessarily feel that way. Um, I think it was about maybe reconditioning my mind over over time to kind of see things differently and not, you know, um, not be so much as intimidated as it, as it is to just be um, uh, embracing the challenge and not shying away from it. Um, and I think that that was very helpful for my development as a, as a person and a young adult, um, let alone a player. My uh, my sophomore year of uh, of college in preseason, I tore my ACL and I was out of the game uh, by and large for roughly 18 months. Um, the first year I couldn't do anything really. Uh, the second year I could just practice. And so it, uh, it, it gave me a, a perspective that I hadn't wanted at the time, of course, but uh, looking back on it, I think it was very needed. Um, I think it, uh, it, it taught me a lot of lessons having to be away from the game and something that I love to do. And, you know, something that was part of my identity for my whole life until that point. Um, what did it mean to me? What, um, it kind of reminded me uh, why I, I love the game, why I wanted it in my life. And I learned what it meant to really want something and to work for it, um, even in spite of some, you know, um, not so great odds. You know, I was told initially that uh, there was a chance that I wouldn't be able to play again. And, uh, you know, there was a chance that I could, but if I, if I, you know, I could have opted out of the surgery and I would have to give up the sport or I could take the surgery and take my chances and see if I could, return. And so I opted for the, for the latter. Um, and, and over those 18 months, um, I, I developed patience. I, I garnered a, a, a much greater appreciation for the process of working towards something and appreciating the little things, the small victories, you know, um, just being able to walk again after I tore it, uh, was a big step being able to juggle a ball, kick a ball. Um, the little things that I had taken for granted up until that point, um, I, I really uh, was much more grateful for. Um, and I think gratitude overall was something that I was able to cultivate. Um, and so once I returned um, to the game, I had a much better understanding as a, as a player and as a person, as an athlete, what it means to keep yourself in shape. I learned, um, you know, recovery techniques, uh, different strengthening exercises, different programs I could use to boost my, my play on the field. Um, and I think it just helped me see myself much more holistically. Um, and I think I, I, got, I got a lot of confidence through going through that negative time in my life. Um, at, at the, when it happened, I probably wouldn't have told you that, but I think going through it, it really um, was a great um, learning opportunity for me. And I, I think I made the best of it. And so I, I've, uh, since I graduated college, while I still play, I, I've, uh, I've been graduate school. I'm working on my doctorate right now in psychology. And I, I think I take that same kind of attitude to just getting to getting through the life of a graduate school student, completing a, a doctorate degree and, and working as a as a licensed professional counselor with people who have different kinds of stress uh, and different circumstances that are weighing on them. But I think a lot of the same principles that I was able to learn firsthand through sports and through injuries and through just kind of self discovery, I think I've been able to um, use those uh, effectively with people. Um, across a wide range of experiences and, and backgrounds and demographics. Absolutely. There's some great lessons that you took from those experiences. Yeah. One of the ones that I wanted to highlight on was you said embracing the challenge. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like as somebody who's in school, who's got a huge workload, who's also working? <laughs> You've got a lot of things on your plate right now, Vince. So what does embracing the challenge look like to you? I think for me, what embracing the challenge looks like is, um, well, let's see, how can I describe it without using those words? I think it's leaning into the, the uh, inherent struggle that's, that comes with being um, you know, a doctoral student and trying to establish yourself as a young person. I think uh, when I was in my younger days, I would look at those as not insurmountable necessarily, but really um, intimidating in a way and, and not being sure of myself if I could do this or I could do that. And I think going through some tough times in life, like the injury and, and whatnot, I think um, I learned that I'm a lot stronger than I realized I was at different times in my life. And that 
while the stress um, and the challenge of getting through a doctor program and establishing, establishing yourself as a young person uh, and a professional, it is difficult. It, it's not impossible though. And I think um, embracing the challenge for me means instead of wishing for something to be easier, it's about working to make yourself stronger, to handle, um, to handle more stress or to more, to more work or whatever the case may be. Yeah, there are a couple aspects in there. Number one is the acceptance of the situation that you're in. And then also inherent in everything you're talking about is establishing a level of self-confidence. Is that important, do you think, in stress is understanding acceptance and self-confidence? Or do you think that you can get over stress without those two aspects? Theoretically, I think you can get over stress uh, without those aspects being present. I, I will say, I think it's a lot more difficult to do so. Um, I think a lot of times for many of us, stress can, uh, can kill our self-confidence. And I think if, um, if that's the case, it just becomes much more of an uphill battle. Is it impossible? No, I would, I would, I, I don't like to use that word, but, uh, uh, I think it just, it would, it, it, you would be in a much tougher spot to make that happen. Um, otherwise, I think if you are able to include the, the self-confidence, uh, when it comes to looking at stress in a way that says, Hey, as, as a person, this might be stressful and I'm, I'm not going to try to ignore it because that's not going to be helpful. Embracing it, accepting it, like you said. Uh, but knowing that I've, I've, um, I've been through a lot in my life as a person, like we all have, I've gotten through it. I'm still here. Um, and that's evidence to support the notion that I'm strong enough to handle whatever it is that's in front of me currently at this point in time. Um, I might not know right now in this moment, how I'm going to navigate it, but if I keep the faith and I, and I try and I, you know, I, I try to navigate and, and learn and do what I can to, to mitigate this or to get through it. It's, it's not a matter of if at that point, it's a matter of when. So what about that person who's really at their lowest point and just can't find that self-confidence as you were mentioning? And one of the tools you just suggested was looking at past evidence to see the strength mm -hmm. and the resilience that you've shown in your life. What's another tool that you offer your clients in terms of finding confidence when you're feeling at your worst, when things seem to be sure. falling apart around you? Sure. Uh, gratitude is, mm -hmm. is what I use. I mean, it's maybe more of a buzzword these days than it has been in the past. Um, but I think gratitude is, is uh, helpful for all of us uh, to varying degrees. I think for the person who's really in a low spot, who's going through a tough time, who just can't seem to see that Mm. Um, for themselves, I think cultivating a sense of gratitude, um, it, yes, it, it can help you remind yourself that you've gotten through tougher times and that you're stronger than you realize, but it can also remind you of the good that you as that person have, um, have created in your life, you know, that you might take advantage of in a day-to-day -day kind of situation, or you might forget because, you know, we all have stress and responsibilities and things that are pulling at our attention simultaneously, especially today with technology being what it is, social media, all that kind of stuff. There's, there's a lot of competing demands for all of us for our attention and our time and our energy. And I think um, having some kind of practice of gratitude uh, in a daily sense can bring you back as, a, as an individual and ground you and remind you of how far you've come, mm -hmm. what good you have in your life, what you've clearly you've done plenty of good to have what you have in your life. And don't forget that. And and lean on that as, as, um, as, a, as a rock, so to speak, to get through these hard times and to remind yourself that you're a lot stronger than you realize and that you can do this and that you have, you know, um, you have much to look at and be grateful for in your life that, uh, that supports that notion. Absolutely. And you mentioned that when you were talking about recovering from your injury, just having gratitude for being able to walk again mm -hmm. and then being able to kick that ball again, just noticing those small steps and having so much appreciation for the, that growth. Yeah, I, I think that, that that lesson in particular, I think is really a, a powerful um, lesson to, um, to, to be ingrained in you as a person. I mean, I, I think that uh, we all are so busy and doing many things and um, having the ability to kind of take a step back and to really appreciate those small victories. Um, it, it, I think it reminds us, it can remind us, I should say, of what really matters in life, what's important. It can mm -hmm. kind of help us uh, gain some clarity um, and uh, kind of, uh, you know, create a sense of inner peace that I think is hard to mimic otherwise. You know, that inner peace part I want to talk about as well, because I was looking over your website and your bio. And one thing I noticed was you mentioned life is too short to be unhappy. 
What is it that gave you that perspective as a young person? Life seems like there's so much time. You have your whole life ahead of you. What gives you that reflection that life is too short to be unhappy? I think I think uh, at, at different points, um, seeing how some people that I knew, you know, how they lived their lives, uh, how they saw things, uh, the negativity that some people can can manifest, sometimes unintentionally, just by how they view life, uh, was was a path that I didn't want to go down, and it, it uh, in, in a way, it kind of um, it kind of scared me a little bit because I didn't want to live my life that way, and you know, of course, through dealing with death uh, or loss of loved ones or friends. Um, it's a reminder that there's nothing guaranteed in life. Um, we, in the grand scheme of things, um, even a, a, a healthy, lengthy life is, uh, is, is, is short, you know, and I think that uh, it's not to look at it from a morbid or a pessimistic perspective, but more of, um, again, a, a gratitude, a grateful perspective. Let's be grateful for the time that I have right now in this moment today. This is this is what I have as a person and let's make the most of this. And, you know, nothing is guaranteed in life, of course, but um, if I can, if I can take advantage of this moment and make it something meaningful to me as the individual and make, and, and, and make me a little happier and, and, and do some good and, and put that into the world, then that's a great, that's a great day. That's a great moment, you know? Uh, and if you do that, Hey, five days a week, seven days a week, that can become a great life. Um, and so that's kind of how I came to, um, uh, embrace that kind of uh, mindset. Yeah, really cool, really cool. I think it's a great perspective, especially to have at your age and to be just, you know, entering into your career with that mindset is so powerful. Working, another question I had was in terms of working with brain injured people and with athletes and um, with young people kind of trying to establish their place in society and in their own lives and understand their purpose on this earth. What do you find is a commonality in terms of a source of stress? Is there something that seems to keep coming up over and over again as the reason why people are so stressed out? When it comes to folks who have had traumatic brain injuries or just generally speaking? All of the above. I mean, is there a commonality? Maybe that's my first question. Is there a commonality between people in terms of stress or is it unique to each individual? If you're listening to this podcast, chances are you didn't get into business to be miserable. The problem is that people feel that if their business gets busier, if they start becoming more successful, that happiness will eventually set in, but it can actually get worse. This is why I created the Business of Happiness Prosperity Coaching. In this one-on-one coaching, we look at how to redefine success on your terms and refine the joy and the passion in your dream. Visit me at thebizofhappiness.com and become the happiest business owner you know. I think it tends to be a little more unique mm. um, to each person. Um, I think there could be, you could say arguably there's several somewhat consistent themes when it comes to stress and how people are perceiving it in life. Um, to, to speak to the traumatic brain injury or concussion um, group of people, I think that one of the one of the most common sources of stress for these folks is that they uh, they want to resume their uh, their pre morbid or their previous level of activity prior to the injury. Mm-hmm. And they, they want to rush back, and especially the athletes that I work with, they want to get back in the field, they want to play, or folks who their job's on the line, they want to get back and work and provide and, and, and do what they like to do. Uh, and they, they can't at that moment, they're just not mm-hmm. able to. And that's a source of frustration and, um, and stress for these folks. And I think part of what's important that I emphasize when I would in my work, um, when it comes to concussions is that there has to be a, a period of grieving when it comes to concussions because uh, people do get better for the most part. Many folks who recover within a certain time frame, um, it, it does vary uh, from person to person to, to an extent. And so that uncertainty as far as how long the recovery is going to take, how long it's going gonna, it's gonna to be until I can do what I want to do or wh- where I was before the injury, it's not entirely clear. And mm. I think that with the folks that I talk about or I work with, we talk about, you know, let's, let's take a step back. Let's accept the fact and acknowledge that, yes, we've had an injury. Uh, it's going to affect your, your, your brain in certain ways. And right now in this time and space, 
it's not feasible um, or recommended or even healthy to try to jump back into that same pace or that same lifestyle because your your body, your brain is is uh, recovering and it needs the time and the space. So you can grieve the fact that right now you're not who you were prior to the accident or the injury. Um, and it doesn't mean you're not going to get back there, but I think you have to give yourself the time and the space and the patience to let the brain and the body do what it needs to do, which is to recover. Hmm. It might take, might take person A three weeks to recover, might take the person B two months, might take you longer or, or shorter. You don't really know until you kind of let go of the need to rush back into it um, as, as the client. Uh, and I, I think that's a, that's a very common uh, source of stress for folks who have had traumatic brain injuries. Um, we, we try to work on um, very gradual resumption of um, pre-injury activities um, over time. You know, it's, I use the analogy, I mean, I, I use sports, I guess, for a lot of analogies when it comes to my clinical practice, just because it can be easy. Um, but it's like trying to, it's like trying to pitch on a broken arm, you know? Mm. It, yes, you, you broke your arm and you, you, you were pitching at a high level and right now you're injured and you can't and you want to do that. But if you keep trying to throw on it, you're just going to uh, frustrate yourself more and, and likely lead to further injury or, or complications. And uh, the same principle applies to brain injuries. You know, mm. we, you as a person, you, you have to give yourself that time and um, the respect, the self-respect to um, rest and do what you need to do to get better and have faith in the process and believe that um, eventually at some point, again, using positive psychology, having belief in yourself that you will get better, that it's going to happen um, in trying to keep that self-doubt at bay is, is really critical to the whole uh, trajectory of the recovery process. It's fascinating. You mentioned that the grieving is so important, almost like that grieving is a part of the acceptance process. Absolutely. And I, yeah, it's so fascinating because I wonder if that will extend even further into other stresses in terms of an idea that you wanted something to be a certain way and it just isn't that way, you know, whether it's the economy or school or your family or a relationship and you really had hoped that it would be something else and it just isn't what it is and right. how important it must be to grieve that previous expectation of what you imagined to be true. Absolutely. I mean, you know, especially, I mean, as a young person myself going through sports, going through the injury, that for sure was not what I wanted. Um, mm -hmm. It's not what I expected or anticipated. That's that I wasn't happy at the time, but I think it's a, it's a valuable lesson in the sense that uh, it, that there's a lot, of, there's a lot in our lives as people that we can't control that affect mm -hmm. us. Um, we have a lot of control, don't get me wrong, but it's not over everything. And there's much in our lives that influence us or impact us that is beyond our immediate control. And I think um, by accepting the fact that we're grieving the fact that things aren't what we wanted it to be, it also teaches us to, to learn how to let go in a way, you know, um, because letting go is so liberating. If you can really, if you can really ingrain that into yourself, um, it really is like a weight lifted off your shoulders because, and, and I've been just as guilty of it as anybody else has at different times in my life. You know, I think it's letting go can, can free you in a lot of ways. Uh, it can help with the gratitude thing, like I mentioned before, but it, it, it can kind of take away the personal expectation that we tend to have that we have this control and it's up to us. And, you know, we can fix everything that happens, even if it's bad. And sometimes you can't and things happen and it's not anybody's fault necessarily. It's just sometimes that's just what happens in life for lack of a better way of putting it. Um, and by letting go or grieving in this sense, um, it, it, it shifts the focus away from what you can't control. And I think over time it can shift it into what you can control. Mm. And that, that, that kind of aligns with the, the gratitude thing that I was talking about before. Um, but, but letting go and accepting and grieving is, is it's okay. I think people think that it's a, it's a bad thing or they try to avoid it. And it's, it's actually really good for us. So we let it, we let it teach us lessons and it can, I think it can be really healthy and, and um, a positive in our lives. Yeah. I think there's also a lot of shame wrapped up in it. Mm -hmm. um, especially in sports, I could imagine when you think that you pushed yourself so hard to get to where you are, there's a lot of discipline that you carry a lot mm -hmm. of pride in and a lot of yep. effort that you've put so much time and, um, mm -hmm. and, and also perseverance and to suddenly be able to, to, or be asked to just let that go. There's a lot of shame wrapped up in there as well that I'm sure you have to work through. Absolutely. And especially with athletes and even myself, when I was, when I was younger, I mean, like you said, to your point, um, 
you know, you have to have discipline in place to get to, to play any sport uh, to a high level. You have to have um, consistent practice and structure and mm-hmm. uh, dedication and, uh, and time put in and work. Um, it, it, there's, there's no doubt about that. Um, and I think that when something like an injury happens, for example, you know, the blueprint you use to get to that point is kind of thrown out the window. And it's like, yeah. well, what do I do now? I, You're I, used to just pushing through the pain and stretching yourself further. Right, right. I mean, it, that, that whole mentality is, uh, is definitely instilled in sports culture and soccer is no, no, it's not immune to that. That was definitely the case in my experience growing up. And, you know, when, when you get to that point, there isn't that kind of uh, narrative to, to push you along through the recovery process. It's a lot more individualized and you're a lot more on your own than we, we'd care to think. Uh, and I think during those times, you, you again, to, to, to have the, the most optimal recovery you can from whatever injury, of course, within reason, you, you have to have a, a sense of letting go and just doing what um, the doctors tell you to do or what's being advised to you and having faith in what they do and, and letting go of the kind of rigid discipline that got you to that point and kind of being a little more nimble, cognitively speaking, be a little more nimble. Let's, mm-hmm. let's, um, let's pivot here and let's try a different approach. Let's be a little more flexible mentally and, and open our mind up a little bit to something else that could help us that we might not have used up until that point. That doesn't mean it's not going to be helpful for us in the future or in this moment right now. Yeah. And I love the language you just chose in terms of pivoting and being more nimble. That feels like something that I can be more confident in and have control over something. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Excellent. So what is there for you right now, Vince, that you know needs to be let go? Is there anything in your life at the moment that need that release well you know it's it's funny you say that i mean as a as a doctoral student life is it's it's very uh, on the go all the time you know there's there's competing demands for my attention every day it, it feels like and so i think you know there's uh there's deadlines there's dissertations there's residencies internships that you have to keep cognizant of uh let alone exams papers whatever going to class uh, and if you, if you get too, if I get too outside of my, you know, uh, my day or my week, it can become overwhelming because I think, oh man, I have this to do and this and a year from now, this is going to have to happen and this yeah. and that. And it's, it can, it can spiral pretty quickly for me. And I, I'd imagine for a lot of doctoral students. So I, I think keeping, you know, self-doubt at bay is a, um, it's not a constant struggle, but sometimes it creeps up and being aware of it and, and handling it is important. Not trying to just push it under the rug or try to ignore it. Um, you know, these, these things that I talk about, I, I use in my daily life, you know, reminding myself of the positive, uh, attributes that, that I've cultivated my own strengths, um, you know, looking back at my history and what I've overcome, what I've gotten through. I mean, that's, that's having gratitude for what I have. I mean, that's, those are things that I go to every day and I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't, uh, recommend or, uh, advise clients or patients I work with anything that I wouldn't do myself. And, uh, I guess to answer your question, those, those things uh, are what I need to and continue to, to work on and improve. That's great. That's really cool. I love your vulnerability in answering that question. Thank you. Because I think it's important also to know that even though you're an expert in this field, it's a constant practice. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I kind of like to think of it as like winning the, the, the daily battle in the mind. If you can win the battle in your mind as a person, the rest of the day, no matter what it looks like, is a lot more tolerable and a lot easier to, to manage and to, um, to thrive within. Fabulous. Fabulous. Yeah. And I love the idea also that nobody's alone in this, that we all have these challenges in terms of mindset and perspective. Definitely. Yeah. 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 yeah I think some folks come into the counseling and they, they have that fear that, you know, I'm the only one who's feeling this. I'm yeah. the only one who's ceasing this way. I'm the only one who's going through this. And uh, I, I think when they get to a point when they're feeling safe, and able to open up in a, in a therapeutic relationship, for example, uh, it's powerful and it can be potent to, to have them realize that, you know, it's not just me and people go through this as well. And, and I'm not alone. And even just the idea of not being alone can be a therapeutic in and of itself mm. for, a lot of, for a lot of folks. Mm-hmm. And also add to that faith aspect that everything's yeah. going to be okay. Other people have gotten through this as well. I can too. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. So Vince, if Thank you for all this incredible insight that you're bringing. Where can people find you if they want to reach out to you, if they know somebody who needs your support in the sports realm or the traumatic brain injury realm? How can we find you? 
they can go directly to my website, which is reginellacounseling.com, R-E-G-I-N-E-L-L-A. Um, they can also find me on Psychology Today. That's a national directory of psychologists and therapists and counselors. Uh, so they can search my name, Vincent Michael Reginella, through there and they'll find me. Uh, I'm in the process of getting uh, an Instagram page up for my business. So that'll be, that's in the works, but it'll be, uh, it'll be soon up and running. Awesome. And please, yeah. anyone can find you in the show notes of this podcast episode as well. And we'll be sure to update that Instagram handle as soon as you get it to us, Vince. Great. Great. My question to you is, what is your superpower, Vince? What is my superpower? Mm-hmm. That's a good question. Hmm. I would say, um, I would say at this point, I would say my superpower, and this is going to sound maybe paradoxical, but bear with me. I think it's being um, disciplined yet flexible. Hmm. I think that's great. Yeah. I think the paradox in it is the is the superpower. Yeah, yeah, that once again, that being nimble and being able to pivot, and despite that, having a great goal and an intention yes. and a discipline. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Very powerful. Let me ask you, what's your superpower? Oh, my superpower. Thank you for asking. The, nobody's ever asked me that as be, being interviewed on my yeah. on my podcast. Yeah. So thank you so much. I think my superpower is bringing positivity. That's why the business of happiness. For some reason, I'm able to see both sides of the coin always. And in mm-hmm. any challenge, there always is a positive perspective. There's always some lesson to be learned or growth to be, come from it. And I think that that's my superpower. I'm always able to see something positive out of any challenge, which is, which is a great resource to have, especially in your field as well, in terms of being able to embrace that challenge, mm-hmm. as you mentioned earlier, and find what can, good can come out of this. Yeah, I, I mean, definitely. I, I, it's a very cool superpower to have. It's a lot of value in that, for yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And my next question to you is, what is your definition of happiness? My definition of happiness? Hmm. Some loaded questions here. I like it. Um, I would say uh, my definition of happiness. Um, I think happiness uh, is comprised of... Uh, uh, meaning, personal meaning that we as individuals create that have uh, true resonance with us that really bring us um, a profound sense of joy or uh, reward or um, gratification that's really, um, that, that's hard to mimic or um, imitate uh, otherwise. And I think happiness has, is having that meaning and that, 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 personal, um, the personal, uh, pursuit and being able and having the privilege to be able to, to, to go after that every day. Um, whatever it is that brings you that, that inner peace, that joy, that meaning, that gratification, knowing what that is and then going after it every day is, uh, I think that's, that's the definition of happiness, at least from my perspective. And what is that for you? What is that pursuit? I, I think for, for me, I um, trying to make the world a better place than it was before I came along is really important to me um, through, through different means, whether it's through uh, psychology, through counseling, through, um, through sports, through soccer, through my interactions with my family or my friends or my neighbors or people I just bump into in the street, um, trying to inject positivity kind of, as, as you alluded to, um, means a lot, means a lot to me. Um, you know, I, I think that I, I, I do contemplate the, you know, the, the notion that nothing's guaranteed um, sometimes. And I, and I think that trying to do whatever you can in this moment and whatever setting you're in is, uh, and making it better or having some kind of good, um, a part of that's really, really important and resonates with me. Absolutely. That's, yeah. that's really cool. A very powerful purpose as well to follow through with. Mm-hmm. So my final question to you today, Vince, is if you could leave us with one 30-minute statement, something that you know would reach everybody and touch everybody in terms of how to live their lives more intentionally and to decrease their stress and overwhelm, what would that be? Hmm. You are much stronger than you realize. Mm. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Well said. 
Well, let me ask you before I forget, what is, what is your definition of happiness? My definition is ex fully accepting everything that you have and having gratitude for it. So you can tell we have very similar philosophies mm -hmm. and being so grateful for everything that you have and recognizing and having confidence in your, what you do have and your capabilities and so eager for more. I mm -hmm. believe in just so much more. I believe in the power of wanting more, being excited for more, but being very grateful for what you have in this moment, not needing the more because you have everything you need, but wanting more just for the fun of it, for the joy of it. That to me is the definition of happiness. I like that a lot. It's a very, it's a very powerful definition. I well, thank that. you. Yeah. <laughs> thank yeah. you, Vince. Thank you so much for joining us today on the business of happiness. And thank you for throwing my questions right back at me. <laughs> I appreciate sure. it. <laughs> and thank you to you for listening to today's episode. And I highly invite you to follow Vince on his website and on his Instagram when it comes available. And Vince, we're going to be looking for great things from you. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for having me on. Wonderful. And remember, when you feel good, you can do good. Bye-bye.